Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We have been taking some of the healing miracles that happened under Jesus' earthly ministry, and we're studying them because when we look and see what they did, if we do what they did, we get what they got. Amen. Amen. And so we're taking these really line by line, and we're studying them. When the Holy Spirit saw fit to record about 19 individual cases of healing that happened under Jesus' ministry, evidently in those cases is everything we need to know to receive healing and to minister healing. And so that's why we're taking the time to study these. So go with us to Luke chapter 13, and we'll start reading in verse 10 today. Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. Hey, listen, get a notebook, get a pen and paper, uh, read along with us, take notes, follow along with us. Amen. Amen. Luke 13 and verse 10 reads, And Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him, and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Now, I want us to back up to verse 10, and let's look at this line by line, statement by statement, and let's be a student. Amen? Amen. It says, And Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. The Word tells us that Jesus went everywhere teaching, preaching, and healing. Notice this, that in, in the synagogue, Jesus was primarily teaching. That lets you know believers need teaching more than anything. Yes. They need That's the good. Word taught to them. Yes. Why? Because through the teaching of the Word, people can receive their healing and the miracle that they need. Right. Yes. And so we need to know what the Word says. Amen? Amen. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, God said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So what is, the goals, what is the goal of the enemy? Keep people ignorant. Yes. Yes. Well, what is Jesus' goal? Teach them. Yes. Why? Teaching is the cure for ignorance. Yes. Run ignorance out. Yes. Amen. Amen. He didn't say when it said they are destroyed, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He didn't say they're destroyed because of the devil. That's right. That's That's right. Amen. Amen. He said they're destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Ignorance will keep us outside of the blessings of God from flowing. Amen. When we have accurate knowledge of the word, we know what belongs to us in Christ. And so we are able to overcome the enemy. That's why the enemy seeks to keep people ignorant of their authority, of their rights in Christ. Because ignorance gives a place to the devil. But knowledge closes the door to the devil. Amen. Amen. When people are untaught, the devil takes advantage of them. And that's what he's looking. He's looking to take the advantage of people. That's why teaching is so important. Amen. Amen. 
Accurate teaching of the word is the cure for doubt and unbelief. Yes. It's the cure for fear. It's the cure for sickness. It's the cure for poverty. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's the cure. And notice what Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Notice what is that? The word is, is, to, is to run out poverty. The word is to change the situations of people's lives. Amen. Amen. Now go with me if you would and let's look again here in uh, verse 11. Uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 11. And it says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Notice that the word says she had a spirit of infirmity. So this was not from God. God wasn't teaching her. This was an evil spirit. Uh, It's a spirit of infirmity caused by an evil spirit. A spirit of infirmity, if someone were to have a spirit of infirmity, it, 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 it carries with it this idea that They're constantly sick, one thing after another. Every time something comes around, they get it. Every time, I mean, it's just one thing after another. And this spirit of infirmity was on her for 18, causing her problems for 18 continual years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, it had attached itself to her body and it caused her body to be bowed over. She could not straighten up. Uh, So notice this, she's looking down at the way she's bowed over and she's looking down at the ground for 18 years. Uh, I so appreciate that Jesus' thought toward this is she ought to be healed. Meaning this, she ought not be used to what she's had for so long. If it's wrong, don't get used to it. Amen. Don't get used to sickness over time. Don't get used to symptoms just because they've been there for so long. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, I put up with stuff too long. Well, you don't have to anymore. I said, you don't have to anymore. Why? Sickness doesn't belong to us. Amen. Amen. Now, being a Jew, this woman was a Jew. So it said that she was a daughter of Abraham. So she was a Jew. She was in the synagogue. So it's likely she had been attending church all this time and never received healing in 18 years. Our churches should be a place where people can come and receive healing. Yes. Amen. 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 And if, if we're not, and I'm talking about, especially even to pastors, if people aren't being healed, find out why. Yes. 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 Amen. Study the word, get in the word and find out why, because it's God's plan that they be healed yes. and that they receive healing in our churches. Amen. Yes. If people aren't being healed, it's not on God's side, it's on man's side. Yeah, right. Because healing has been provided for. We need to gain knowledge of the word, but we also need to gain skill with that word mm-hmm. so that we can get results. Mm-hmm. Now, notice uh, she didn't get healed sitting at home. Yeah. She wasn't out shopping. She was in the church. She was in a place where the anointing could reach. Jesus was there. It's so important to keep your family in a church because that's where the anointing can reach them. You say, well, can't God reach them anywhere? Sure he can. But uh, the power of God and the anointing of God is not manifesting everywhere. And so that's one of the things I always did. We always did with our sons. We kept them in the local church. Why? Because we're keeping them in the atmosphere where the anointing of God can yes. minister to them and reach Amen. them. When people need help, get to the get to church, get yes. to the, get to where God's meeting people's yes. needs. Yes. Amen. Yes. And people will sit at home and you know and and not go to church and just pray and pray and pray for God to reach them. Well, this woman didn't do that. She got up and she went to the synagogue. Yes. Do you know what a, what an ordeal it was for her? Bowed yes. over for eighteen years. How, how, her, how she must have ached, yes. how she must have had joint pain. Mm-hmm. For 18 years, she's in a fixed position to get dressed, yeah. to get around, to travel to the, to the synagogue, but she inconvenienced herself to be yes. where God was meeting That's people's right. needs, yes. yeah. to be where Jesus was. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we need to make sure that we don't get used to something and just do what's easy, get to where God's yes. meeting That's people's right. needs. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we know this. She's a Jew because Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham. What's that mean? She had a covenant. Mm -hmm. She Mm -hmm. had a covenant. So you mean to tell me that Jesus, the word tells us she had a spirit of infirmity, but she was one of God's children. Can a Christian have a spirit 
that's not from God? Well, you have to clarify this. You have to qualify this. No Christian can have an evil spirit in their spirit. Right. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dwells yes. there. Yes. And the Spirit of God's not dwelling where a demon dwells. Oh, right. when, a spirit com- when, the, when the Holy Spirit comes in, the demon has to go out. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 Amen. Now, you have to understand we're threefold beings. We, we are a spirit. We have a soul, which is my, made up of our mind, will, and emotions, and we live in a body. Mm-hmm. The spirit of man cannot have a demon in it. Can a spirit get in the mind or the soul of a believer? Yes. Mm -hmm. How? If they listen to him. Mm -hmm. Listening to the wrong thing will open the door to the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But if you quit listening, you can run out that spirit that you gave place to by listening. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, and we did so much teaching in in previous episodes on that about uh, guarding the mind that casting down imaginations, right. running out thoughts, that if we gave place to the devil, we can take back the place Come we on. gave. Amen. 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 Now, can a Christian get a spirit in their body? It can attach itself to their body. That's what happened to this woman. Mm-hmm. She didn't have a demon in her spirit, but this spirit had attached itself to her body and caused this affliction. And, and the word calls it a spirit of infirmity. Mm-hmm. It was a lingering condition. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So she did not have a demon in her spirit, but this thing had attached itself to her body and caused this condition. Why? Her body was simply the house that her spirit lives in. Now, your body is not the real you. It's just the house where the real you resides. For example, if, uh, if you were to buy a home and you might have an inspection done on that home and they say, well, this house has termites. Well, they have, they have certain treatments they do to get rid of termites out of the house. But just because the house had termites didn't mean you had termites right. as the resident of that house. Right. Well, even so, your spirit is a resident in the body, the but body. something can attach right. itself to the body, but that's not the real you. Right. The real you is your spirit. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So her body had something attached to it, but yeah. not the real her, right. not yeah. the spirit. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, and so she could, this, this could be dislodged and this is with the anointing and the power of yes, God that, that that was dealt with. Amen. Amen. So when somebody, but when somebody is sick, that doesn't mean that they have a spirit of infirmity okay. attached to their body. Okay. You can't read one scripture and apply it completely across the board. It was talking about her condition specifically. Because right. sometimes people are just sick because number one, they've run down their body. They have violated the laws of yeah. nature. Yeah. They haven't rested. They haven't taken care of their body. And some, and that will open the door to sickness. Now, we know the devil is indirectly behind all sickness. But with this woman, her condition was directly because of the devil. There was a spirit of infirmity. So uh, can a Christian, uh, e- even if a, a spirit attaches their, attacks their mind or their body, they don't have to stay that way. Can a Christian be set free? Sure. Just apply the word. Be a doer of the word. Amen. Amen. Uh, sometimes they may need help, just like this woman. She needed help. That someone who came along who was skillful with the word that could help her walk free. Amen. Amen. Now in verse 12, I want us to read. It says, And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Mm -hmm. I love this. When Jesus saw her, what did he see? He saw a woman bound. When he saw someone bound, he called her to him. Why? Because he longed for her not to be bound. So we could say this, every sick person, Jesus calls them to him. Jesus calls every sick person to him. Why? Because he he longs for them to walk free. And no one ever came to him in faith without receiving. Amen. So he said to her, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Notice he didn't cast the devil out. Now, the devil had attached itself to her body, but he didn't cast it out. You know what he did? He just spoke. He just spoke about her covenant to her. She had a covenant. And what he said, he said, woman, thou art loosed. Because your covenant looses you. Your covenant looses you. Remember that. You see, every one of us uh, Christians, we have a covenant with God. That looses us. 
from anything that would set us free. I mean, set, hold us captive, right. but we're to be set free from that. Yes. That's right. Every Christian has a right to say, I'm loosed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't have to wait for a man of God to say it. You can say it. Yes. Uh-huh. He said, woman, thou art loose. You have a right to say, I'm loosed because I have a covenant. Right. Right. Amen. He, what's the word say? He whom the son sets free is free. But see, she didn't recognize it. She didn't, she didn't understand how to walk free from that. Uh, and there, that's why some Christians are bound. They don't realize that they are already free. It's not about us trying to get free. It's us recognizing, wait, I have a covenant and I am free. Now I demand my rights. You're not demanding it of God. You're demanding it of the devil. Jesus said to her, woman, thou art loosed. And you know when he said that to her? When nothing had changed in her body. So to, to receive healing or to minister healing, you have to say things before things change That's in your right. body. That's right. You have to say it before. Because right. once you say it, then it's got to fall in line. Amen. It's got to happen. Right. Amen. Amen. And then verse 13, it says, And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Can you imagine this? No wonder she glorified God for 18 years looking at the dirt. For 18 years, look in the wrong direction. Yes. Right. For 18 years, couldn't look up and see the face of people. Yeah. But now, no wonder she gave glory to God. Yes. Her direction changed. Yes. Amen. 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 Shouldn't everyone just be that thrilled? Yes. When, when you see someone healed, shouldn't you be that thrilled that yes. you glorify God? Absolutely. Yes. I want you to see, though, verse 18. It says, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. What's that ruler answering? Her healing, her freedom. He's got no right to answer that. (laughs) That's not his healing, it's hers. But he inserts himself to answer what wasn't his, that belonged to her. She, She was the one set free that day. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said to the people, there are six days in which men ought to work and them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. So this ruler of the synagogue sees a great miracle and instead of rejoicing, makes him mad. Yeah. How distorted does your thinking, how wrong thinking, how far you have gone into wrong oh, yeah. thinking to think that someone's healing, someone's deliverance is a negative. No compassion for someone who had suffered for 18 years. He was more interested in his rules being fulfilled than in this woman being set free. You can tell that it wasn't the ruler who was suffering for 18 years. (laughs) Amen. He had more regard for a day of the week than for a suffering woman's freedom. So it says that he turned to Jesus and listen to this. It says, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and he said unto the people, so he turns around to the, uh, to the congregation. He's not talking to Jesus or the woman. He's turning around to instruct and to direct the people. And he said, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. So he turns and he's upset because Jesus healed her on the Sabbath day. He's rebuking Jesus mm-hmm. to the congregation. Yeah. He's rebuking Jesus. Yeah. He's upset that he healed on the Sabbath day. So he was saying, what you're doing is not holy enough for this day. He, he said the, the Sabbath day was more holy than healing. Wow. Jesus violated that, what that man thought. Yes. He brought healing to the yes. Sabbath day yes. to show yes. that the healing is holy. Yes. Amen. And it's holy enough for the, for the Sabbath day. Yes. It's holy enough for the holy day. Yes. Healing is a holy work, yes. That's right. not just a natural, carnal, unimportant work. Yes. Healing is a holy work because it was provided by a holy Savior. Yes. Amen. 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 The, the, uh, the, the ruler of the synagogue was taking the spotlight off of healing, and Jesus put the spotlight on healing. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you love God and the Word, you love what He loves. Yes. That's right. <laughs> And he loves healing suffering people. Amen. Amen. 
So the ruler of the synagogue said unto people, unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. So let, let's, let, wait a minute, let's just take his statement. Mm-hmm. There are six, six days in which men ought to work. So he called healing work. Right. Well, it's not work for God. It's easy for God. Yes. That's right. That's right. What might be a labor for another man is a flow of God. Yes. Yes. That's good. So he's not only rebuking Jesus, he's rebuking her for receiving healing right. on the Sabbath day. He's rebuking both of them. And he's turning his back to them and addressing the congregation that what you're seeing here isn't right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he says there are six days in which men ought to work. Well, if that's the truth, why isn't he doing the work of healing in those six days? Why isn't he as the ruler of the synagogue doing the healing work in those six days? He's not doing it. Amen. Amen. Uh, he was saying it's enough for any other day, but not for today. Well, he wasn't even doing it any other day. <laughs> Why was he okay with her being sick this long? Because he lacked skill. He lacked knowing his covenant and how to minister that covenant to people. Verse 15, the Lord then answered him. Listen, when the wrong thing is said, answer it. That's right. That's right. I mean, in a setting like this, Jesus did not leave. Those words go unchallenged. When the ruler of the synagogue is rebuking, basically, Jesus and the woman for what's been done, Jesus answered it. In other words, your words aren't going to be the last ones spoken. He said, thou hypocrite. (laughs) The ruler just shouldn't have. He just shouldn't have. Jesus said, you hypocrite. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? So notice this. He's saying, you're kinder to an animal Mm -hmm. on the Sabbath than you are to a woman who is a daughter of Abraham. No wonder he called him a hypocrite. He's saying, you will put the value of an animal above the value of a human. Now, I'll tell you what. I, I like animals. I like pets, but they're not people. That's no. right. That's right. They're not people. Yeah. They don't get the same. They shouldn't have the same place in the affection. Right. And this is what Jesus was saying. You think more of an animal than you do of this woman who's been suffering for 18 wow. years. Wow. Animals and humans are not in the same class of right. being. Right. Don't get un, don't get unbalanced. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> it's wrong to be more compassionate over an animal than you are over a human. Right. Right. <laughs> We can be compassionate toward both, but we don't have to dismiss one. Right. We don't have, Jesus was, Jesus was saying, you don't mind having compassion on an animal, but you won't for a human. Right. You can be compassionate on an animal, but you better be, make sure first you're compassionate over a human. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 16, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, having a covenant with God, Mm -hmm. whom Satan has bound. So who did it? Satan Satan did it. For 18 years, be be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. This holy day, this holy act ought to take place. So uh, he said, ought not this woman with this word carries with it a sense of obligation. That there is an obligation that when any, if anyone that belongs to God when they have, a, they have a need, there's an obligation to meet it. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. We have an obligation to learn how to minister to the sick. Yes. Right. We not only have an obligation to our healer to receive healing for ourselves, but we have a holy obligation to bring freedom to others who are bound. Yes. Yes. We have an obligation to it. Right. And we, have to, we do this by learning the word and becoming skillful with the word. Amen. Amen. And that's, I'm not just talking to preachers. I'm talking to all believers. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Verse 17. And when Jesus had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. Well, I'd hope so. Right? Right? All of his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Notice the ruler of the synagogue had displayed wrong thinking. 
and he was teaching the people wrong. He rebuked Jesus. He rebuked the woman for healing. And Jesus, with one instruction, drove out wrong thinking and put right thinking in place in that place. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, He brought back to the people right thinking. Thank God for the word. It helps us to think right. Amen. So I want to pray for those of you who are watching. I tell you, freedom and healing belongs to you. And so I speak in Jesus' name. Satan, you take your hands off God's property. Every bit of the pain, every bit of the symptoms, every bit of the sickness, every bit of the difficulty, you leave their body in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the great price that Jesus paid. Jesus, we thank you for your obedience to the Father that you took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. And we say we receive healing in Jesus' name. You can say that after me. I receive healing from this pain, symptoms, sickness, and disease. Jesus made me free. I ought to live free, so I choose to live free. And I thank you for freedom, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, I want you to know that the reason we're able to come to you like we get to is because Brother Copeland and KCM Ministries has sowed this time to our ministry. What a seed that they have sown. I tell you what, we honor the seed. We value the seed. We so appreciate what they have done in, in extending this time to us so that we can take the time to minister to you. I ask you, if you're not already, pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. You can go to their website at kcm.org and you can get more information about becoming a partner. And look at the lives that are changed that you get to be a part of when you help be, when you fund, you pray for the ministry, you bring your faith to what God is doing through this ministry. And we say uh, it'll be a blessing to your life. We're a partner. I tell you what, we're going to keep being a partner. We're thrilled to be partners. And uh, we want you to know that it matters to us that you receive what you need from God. And thank God for KCM that's helping us do that. We've been teaching out of our book called The Healer Divine, and we want to get a copy to you. And uh, you can go to our website at deframeministries.org and get that from us. And until we see you next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your own faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.